think I like this better. Well, it's something to play with, at least. Which is something that's cool. So, let's see. What should I mess with? I would like to test out the lighting a little bit. and see how that looks so like if we um if we took like a directional light like a spotlight right Let's actually throw it like behind the tree or something. Now let's see if we can get like some really cool like 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 yeah you can tell I'm an American. Um, Let's see if we can do something absolutely ridiculous. You know, let's see if we can get this thing to actually put some shadows. Might be a bit too huge, but then again, scaling has to be adjusted. Yeah, I mean, scaling can be adjusted, so it's not super insane. Um, but more of the, it seems like it would be easier to make a larger background easier. Like, there's not much of the background that, that got showed now, and I think it looks better. So it probably, like, something fits better in my brain, right? So I have to listen to that, because I, I don't have... Uh, So yeah, so let's see if we can get this thing, um, this needs to be lit, yes, this needs to be lit, alright, that makes sense. So these are actually tree blueprints, I'm guessing. So can you find this thing? Are these blueprints that have been made inside of something? Parent class actor class blueprint tree arba. Is it inside of materials or geometry or anything? Show in folder view. It's inside of materials, sprites. Alright, so. So we've got three sprites here, is what it looks like, and all that. And translucent lit sprite material. So how about if we try the Dashkin entity sprite material real quick on these things?
So let's see if we can mess with this a little bit. So it's not getting lit from the back. Um, let's see on these objects. Cast shadow, we want to set to true. We want volumetric translucent shadows. Oh god, what the hell do we have in the other level? I don't think it was volumetric translucent shadows. I think it was just cast shadow. Though it may need to... Cast Translucent Shadows. Let's go back to the other level real quick and take a look at what we were doing. Oh, fine, I'll check out the level. Jesus. Not what I want to do, but if I'm going to throw something in there, might as well. Okay, so this does have Cast Translucent Shadows on. And this, this guy has the volumetric translucent shadows okay so we need both of those hey adam we're messing around with um camera stuff the um so basically like your camera your level here with the with the camera that we were running with looks like Looks like this. Uh, and yeah, you're right, the particle systems in the background were... They're, they're what's causing the slowdown. And all that. Um, yeah, so that's, you know, that's what it looks like with what you got. Um, if I swap that with my perspective camera... Um, this is what it looks like with the background correct it with the sandwich cam as I call it um, You know we got some trees and stuff there in the background, but that's not a that's not a big deal That's just because of some far clip stuff messed up, but You could at least see the you know, that's the size there And you know if I jump down here to where the tree was and all that It would have shown up but I have a few different things but if I disable that different perspective background it ends up looking like this and and I think that's actually not too bad um, I don't know I I figure I'll give you stuff to play with and all that, but basically with the corrected background versus the very much zoomed in one, it's um, I think it's definitely something we can work with. Um, and the reason why I was messing with all this stuff as so um, is because of lighting. So I set up some tests here with my uh, with my test level. Basically, this is there is a a spotlight coming right down in the middle right here, and there is a point light right here on this platform, and there's a directional light coming from kind of the top left. So if I hit play on this, like this is where I started, I'm under these platforms, I should be in shadow, and then the spotlight comes out and, you know, we've got, we've got a spotlight, you know, it's way too bright of course, but that's just for debugging purposes. Um, 
you know, if I jump on top of where the spotlight is, you know, I'm fully bathed in light. Um, and I've got these platforms here that are translucent textures, right? So they, um, you know, imagine those would be leaves in a tree. And uh, so you can see that, you know, we can, we can light bitey or whatever object with that light appropriately. And the same thing over here where we're coming into coming into light, there's that directional light. You can kind of see the the line there from bigger bitey to smaller bitey that, that goes across. And then the point light over here. is right on this platform and if I go below the platform like I the platform is shadowing me um, and all that so in order to do that a whole hell of a lot has to change so some of the big things are like for our textures on our on our character So these textures basically, they need to use the, um, I found out the settings we need for things and it's the vector displacement map is the right one for our, um, our stuff. But what really matters is the material that we're using. And the material that we're using has to be a masked blend mode for the sprite. And if it's not masked, um, then we can't cast shadows onto it. It can cast shadows if it's translucent, like a translucent meaning there's like grades between being visible and not visible. So like, you know, if we zoom in on, on Bitey on one of those on his eye for like the breed flipbook or whatever there is supposedly on him let me see you know he's got this aura here um you can't really see it too well on this just basic texture but this is all this is all alphas out nicely it's very small we can't do that on characters um, at all. It needs to be either fully there or not there at all. We can't fade things out um, if we're going to cast shadows onto them. So, you know, that means if we want, you know, something like that, if we want shadows on it, it has to be masked, not translucent. And there's, there's no way around that. It just doesn't work. Um, also, it needs to be rendered in perspective mode, otherwise none of the lights work. The lighting math is totally screwed. Um, it's been an open bug since 2015, and it's got like 120 votes on it, and nobody nobody's going to fix it. It's been backlogged. Um, that's just reality. So orthographic camera means that we don't have lighting in the game. Um, and if we don't have lighting, that means we don't have volumetric stuff that looks proper. Um, so I was kind of banging my head against the wall all day today trying to figure out, like, was I insane? Was the game insane? Was the documentation right? Was the documentation wrong? And I found that basically um, Unreal doesn't care about 2D, 2D games. Um, that's, that's what I got out of it. So I think our only option is a perspective camera. And uh, to do masking on those things. We can have, you know, translucent sprites for other stuff. They just can't have shadows cast onto them. So things that would look really good would be things that have their own light. Like an explosion, right? They don't need to ha have shadows. And there's a lot of other things that have to get set and all that, but... That is... That is what um, it's going with. And um, so there's some issues, of course, like um, if you see Fatsack over there, you can see him just fine from the left. 
but you can't see him from, you know, the other way. So, like, I can't see Fat Sack. Oh, I can see Fat Sack now. Um, that's a blessing and a curse, right? Like, we can hide stuff behind the level geometry if we want. Uh, the other thing that kind of sucks is things like logs or whatever else 2D objects. Um, we have to be careful about the back-facing part. Um, we probably won't have any true 3D objects, you know, on the on the track there. So it probably won't be that big of an issue, but we just have to worry about back-facing logs and stuff like that. Um, doing their thing. Especially if we want a, um, a shadow to be cast on Bitey when he's in the log. Like, if there's a... If there's these, you know, god rays coming down or whatever lights coming from the top left, we want the log to shadow bitey. And how we how we do that is we're going to need a piece of geometry in there on that log object, which blocks light. So we'll have to have stuff like that. Shouldn't be too much of an issue, though, but, you know, it might make object creation a little bit more involved. But yeah, so um, Bitey can now become Jesus. So. And yeah, um, we probably should have done a lot of stuff with lighting earlier to kind of figure out some of that crap. But that's kind of why we had lighting on for this sprint anyway. So it's all good. And um, the cool thing is now like all the volumetric effects should work. And all the volume of metric effects with lighting should work, too. And um, that's what I was trying to mess with. And I will continue to mess with in your level a little bit. And I sent you the installer and all that stuff. So I think it... If you want to make another build... We can. It, it takes about 30 minutes. So let me know if you want to and I'm gonna mess I just wanna I'd like to modify your test level just a little bit to add just like maybe some test lighting on one of these and then I'll get rid of it if you don't want it but I want this tree to cast a shadow onto the track You know, like that. Sounds real good. <laughs> Let's see what we can do here. Did we replace the camera on this guy? It's using perspective. Right. Modify the hell out of it. All right.
All right, let's see. Cast translucent shadows. That's probably what we needed and we didn't have. I was like, why are our shadows not working? Yeah, there's a lot of weird stuff with this lighting. I mean, I have to learn exactly everything with um, what what's going on with it, but basically, it has to do with if if objects are movable or not or whatever stuff can get a little out of hand. Super bright texture. Uh, it's not actually super bright. Um, at least I don't think it is. Yeah, okay, so uh, there are some shadows coming in here. At least I don't think it's... it was super bright. I don't think it's super bright anymore. Because that was like the texture setting weirdness. Yeah, that's obviously not correct. Let's just go back and see what the objects need to be set to. Look, this is set to movable, and this is set to movable. And that's set to movable as well. movable and this is stationary so yeah if you if you change stuff basically between movable and stationary and static and all this other stuff it changes a lot about how the lighting works with that object and what's working in the editor like this is a static object
So what you see in the editor is not what you're going to get in the game. So yeah, I did ha have a lot of it right. Just to... So let's go throw this behind that tree, or let's throw the tree in front of it, maybe better. What is this object set to? Movable, movable, movable. All right. Not seeing any of it work. Well, it's probably because we're basically always in shadow here. Thank you, Tree, for being that big. Or is it because it's coming from the wrong side? Yeah, it looks like it's coming from the wrong side. So let's see if we have this thing. Is it, um... There's shadow two-sided, but... Hmm. Well, let's change the direction of the light then. This is the other learning that I need to do is all the stuff with see so yeah, he's now most definitely in the light Let's see how this looks. Let's turn the intensity to something reasonable. Does each individual character state need to be set with mask lighting? Uh, as in, do we need to go through every single asset and update it? 
because if that's the question, I can always just do that programmatically. But yes, um, if the question is, does every single character state need to use mass lighting for shadows to work? It's like, well, yeah, everything needs mass lighting if we want to cast a shadow onto it, regardless of... It's just... It's in the material, so like we can use a different material for a different flipbook if we want to. Yes, only the only the breathe state has been updated to actually um, have correct lighting. So where is the lighting for the entire world? So I'm gonna turn the lighting down on the world. So let's see, we want
How did I do the fog stuff before? Was it the exponential height fog or was it... See, how the hell does the volumetric bug stuff even work? It's just a checkbox, right? Doesn't seem to do a whole hell of a lot, that volumetric bug stuff. Yeah, so I guess if we have actual proper stuff set up, it'll take rejiggering a whole lot of stuff, it looks like, so. Let's see, what materials are all these guys running? Translucent lit sprite material? So they would need, like, masked. As you can see, uh, just because we're using mask stuff doesn't mean we can't use transparency, it just means we can't use fading in and out. Which isn't really a huge deal to be honest. So we can do, we can do lighting. Why is it slowly becoming brighter and brighter? Is that like the sun? Yeah, you know, you can see that, you know, we can actually do some lighting there and that it will look cool if everything was lit properly. Yeah, yeah, I mean just immediately even though the trees are in the fuck in the fucking sky like obviously like if we had shadows coming through here just immediately immediately things look a lot better. <laughs> 
And it also shows that we won't need like a whole bunch of crazy ass foreground if we've got some shadows coming from the front and stuff like that. So, yeah, so get rid of sandwich cam and um, just do it that way. The bloom flares out. Yeah, I think I think you're right. Well, now that we m might have some freaking lighting, you know, that's something we could actually tune. So let's see, if we disable the skylight entirely, <laughs> I see it turn off the damn bloom. <laughs> that bloom. That bloom's a little nuts. Is that part of a uh, post processor? Oh, okay, whether to occlude fog and atmosphere in scattering with screen space blur occlusion from this light. So there are light shafts for light sources. You don't know where it is. Regardless, we will see.
The near waterfall is the big one with the new camera. Yeah, I think it's there's some crazy time of day stuff that's going on. Man, you could totally have you could totally have a sunset. Yeah, so that's the difference between not having shadows and having shadows on a scene there. Wham. Oh, there's the volumetric fog stuff. Oh shit, what are you doing? What happened to my cursor? One unreal. All right, let's see. I'd like to see what the volumetric shadow and cat yeah it's cast volumetric shadow
I'm not really seeing the fog get with. So this spotlight should have an effect on the volumetric fog, like cast shadows, direct indirect lighting, cast volumetric shadows. We would expect some sort of volumetric lighting effect here. Maybe you can't really do a whole heck of a lot. Yeah, I don't, I don't like that volumetric fog stuff at all. Let's find out where those exposures, because that's, that's just, no, nah, it's way too much. Let's see. Um, well, I think it says it's inside of rendering for this thing. Inside of default post processing settings.
<laughs> That's pretty cool, actually. Because the background light is red. It makes his eyes red when he's in shadow. It's evil, evil bitey. Alright, well, let's take a stab at messing with his character a little bit here. Let me just go through and mess with the animations that we are using. So that would be all these um, walk, run, and all those. So we're going to change all these to vector displacement maps with uh, sRGB on.